What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're looking at my top five realistic free agents that the Lions could sign this offseason. This is about the third time I'm recording this because I, I was watching the first one back and I realized there was a lot of things that I did wrong. I was naming the wrong players. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. I, I read it and then I said something else. There's something. <laughs> okay. And also, my hair is a little jacked up. So if it still is, then I don't know. I can't help you. I'm sorry. Just. Okay. Let's get into the intro. All right, guys, let's get this thing started. I don't think the order matters too much in this video, but really, we're going to be assuming, like always, that everyone on this list is going to actually become a free agent. And also, some of these guys on this list are supposed to be more realistic than yesterday's. I mean, yesterday's list was my top five just in general. So they had high risk, high reward. In this list, they're more safer picks. Maybe they're more consistent. They're not as injured, you know? They didn't have one big breakout year. And I also think that the Lions will sign these guys more likely than maybe any of the other guys that I mentioned yesterday. And yes, I would like a few guys from yesterday, but it's okay. We're going to be looking at my five realistic ones. So if you guys have other players that you would put on here, make sure you let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, let's get this thing started. And let's start this thing off at number five, where we have a guy that I think, I think is a little bit of a sleeper. That's why he comes in number five, kind of low on this list. But I think, you know, you can't forget about this guy. And that is Joe Schobert, the linebacker for the Browns. I'm not lying. I really would not be surprised if Jared Davis is traded this offseason. I could I could really see the Lions looking for some options. Maybe they don't do it because they don't find the right they don't find the right deal. But if they can get a you know a pretty nice return before the draft, they may decide to ship him off. And I think this is a really good replacement, Joe Schobert, okay? He is the linebacker out of Cleveland. And even if Jared Davis is still here, you could still bring him in. He's a consistently healthy linebacker that is a run stopper. He's a tackling machine. His numbers are just ridiculous. This season 133 tackles. 2017, 144 tackles. Jared Davis has had one season with 100 tackles. This man had 144 in the season, but he's consistently putting up these numbers. He also had seven tackles for loss and two sacks to go along with the 133 tackles this offseason. He's expected to become a free agent out of Cleveland, and uh, he's a really big bright spot for them, and I would love to, for him to be a Detroit Lion. He's not, an old, he's not an old player, so that'd be really nice to bring him around, and he comes in at number five. Okay, now, now that we're out of the, you know, the, the kind of uh, weird one, I, should I say weird one? Maybe the surprise one. Let's get into, like, the ones that aren't so surprising. At number four is a guy that unfortunately was on yesterday today's list. I'm sorry. Look, the whole point of this was they're not the same players, and I'll explain that as we continue to go on, but this man, I just couldn't keep him off. I had to put him on both lists. That is Javon Hargrave. I feel like Javon Hargrave is a very realistic option for us, more realistic than Chris Jones, even though I want to bring in Chris Jones. I feel like Javon's more realistic because of the money situation, and uh, he's a defensive tackle out of Pittsburgh, who again is a big run stopper, who I think we definitely need looking at our defensive tackle position with Snack Saracen completely regressing and becoming a lot worse last season and also Ishan Robinson, who's most likely going to be a free agent. Javon Hargrave fills a very big need. He's not only just a run stopper, though. He also had 10 and a half sacks in his last two seasons. He did have 60 total tackles. And he's not an old defensive tackle. I would love to bring him in for maybe a three, four-year contract. He's one of the better defensive tackles that will be available, and I feel like this is a really good time to snatch him before, you know, he starts declining. Javon Hargrave comes in at number four, and now let's hop into the top three. Coming in at number three, we have a cornerback out of Denver, and this is Chris Harris. Last time I said Chris Jones, but no, it's Chris Harris. Now, Chris Harris is a cornerback that's not super young, okay? Definitely the oldest, I think the oldest out of any of these guys. He's over 30 years old. He does have 20 career interceptions. He's a really good cornerback, really good cornerback in the league. The problem is everybody's getting worried about that age. Like, ah, snap. I don't know if I'm going to pay him because he's kind of old, but if we get him on a maybe three-year deal at the max, maybe not any more years than that. I feel like by the time he starts declining, he'll be pretty much ending his contract with Detroit, and I feel like he would just completely finish off this cornerback crew. Could you imagine say, uh, Slay not getting traded? You bring in Chris Harris. You also pair him along with Imani, who was a beast last season. Put Justin Coleman in the slot. I love that core. Then you can draft a late-round cornerback to put in as potentially, you know, someone that could grow into the next starter when Chris Harris' time is up. Maybe you only get him for a one-year deal, maybe a two-year deal. It don't matter. Chris Harris would be really nice because you need to win next season and this guy is proven he comes in at number three hopping into number two we have a running back yes a little bit different here and no it's not Derrick Henry but it is a power back and that is Jordan Howard out of Indiana now he came in with Chicago and he was balling out he had two seasons over a thousand yards rushing actually one season was over 1300 yards rushing his role started to decrease and with Philadelphia didn't see a lot of a role with guys like Miles Sanders in the backfield as well but I think it would be perfect for Detroit wouldn't be a huge contract because there's so many running backs that will be available and if we don't want to go necessarily draft route and we don't want to get rid of carry on you want to keep around ty johnson good this i think rounds out that whole group you know you're getting a reliable running back in jordan howard who's a power back who's going to give you a completely different 
different weapon than what you have right now, right? You got you got Carrion who kind of does it all. You got Ty who's a speedster, but then you got Jordan Howard who's that big, strong running back that can really mix everything up. He's still young, and I love the thought of bringing this guy in. I liked him at Indiana, and he's still doing his thing, and I would love for him to be a lion. Now, hopping into number one, before we do so, I'm going to give you guys an honorable mention, and there's Graham Glasgow. I, I can't put him on the list because he is a lion right now, but I'm going to put him in here because I, will, I want to sign him back. Please come back, Graham. But a guy that pair with Graham Glasgow or potentially replace him comes in at number one, and then it's Joe Thune. Now, some of you guys were confused why I put Brandon Sheriff on his state's list and not Joe Thune. Well, the simple reason is this. I didn't want to put him on the same list. I already had this list planned out, and I wanted to make sure Joe Thune was on my realistic one because I feel like it's more realistic that Thune is a Lions is a Lion next season than potentially Brandon Sheriff. And there's a few reasons for that, but I couldn't tell you guys in the comments because then I would have gave away who my number one was. But in that case, Joe Thune is a Patriot. And that's really the biggest reason I could see him being a Lion. If he's a Patriot, the Lions are already interested. I'm just saying, Patriot wait? No, okay. Joe Thune, 27 years old. I believe he was a third-round pick when he was drafted. Not very old. He's been in the league for a few years, but he's played at least 16 games every single season with the New England Patriots. He's been a beast. He's a safe offensive lineman in the fact that he hasn't dealt with injuries, so there's no risk reward. Brandon Sheriff is an absolute baller when he's healthy. Problem is there's a risk because he's missed, I think, 13 games in the last two years. In this case, Joe Thune doesn't do that, so there's not much of a risk. But at the same time, he's still a really good offensive lineman. He's going to want that payday, and he comes in at number one. Let me hear your thoughts in the comments below. Who would you add? Thank you, Pat, for watching. Make sure you check out my gaming channel, Dose Be Gaming, if you want some funny stuff, and I have a good idea coming over there. So thank you, Pat, for watching, and I'm out.